basic question. When did you first start rapping? When I was nine years old, I started rapping. My inf um, inspiration for, to start rapping was Grandma's Flash Fridge 5, Treacherous 3, all the earlier rap groups. By the time I was 16, I made a record because I sent a tape in to Rick Rubin and he liked it and he called me back. I recorded my first record and I went from there. Did it go the way it went with the way it was shown in Crush Groove? Was that accurate? No. No, 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 that was just kind of it. That was a movie. <laughs> Wasn't it as dramatic as that, huh? No, I mean, it was nothing like that. That was just a movie. How did it actually go? He just called like you back. Like I just said, yeah. He, he called you back there and then. Um, that's it. Called me back and I went down there. Mm -hmm. And we went from there. We went to the studio. Mm -hmm. He liked you on the spot. He liked the tape. Well, he wouldn't have called back. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Talk to a lot of guys doing rap now. I mean, for some reason, it's kind of associated with street culture, that type of thing. But actually, none of the big rap stars you come from what we would call the street, you guys are all pretty much from middle class or even affluent families. How about in your own case? What, what's Same that? middle class. Grass, trees, yeah. plenty of presents on Christmas, you know, yeah. regular. Not nine kids sleeping in the middle of a ride and testing. No, no, no. That. <laughs> so, some people tend to That's think. a stereotype for yeah. rap. You know? Uh -huh. Whereabouts did you grow up? Um, St. Albans, Queens. Uh-huh. So a lot of the kids you were growing up with were doing the same type of thing? Yep, still are. Still are? Yep. You said like from nine years old, so you were in second, uh, third grade? Yeah, nine, yeah, nine years old, third grade. And even like kids that age were, were rapping the Definitely. Same? Yeah? Even now, yep. It's the thing. So I mean, now it's like, you know, everywhere around the country, even in the Midwest, uh, kids are doing it. It's like spread completely. It's all over the country, man. Everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. They're trying. Either they're doing it or they're damn sure trying. Uh -huh. From that age, though, you were pretty much better than anybody else. No, it takes time to get good at anything. You know, you, you grow. You know, I liked the music and I was into it. And I just started, you know, and kept going and kept going. Got better and better. You know. What separates you from the other guys, though? Why is it like you, the Beasties, Run DMC? Basically... Well, actually, the fact was not. So you guys have been successful, whereas the other rap acts haven't quite been as successful in crossing over. What is well, that about you? As far as crossing over is concerned, I ain't trying to cross over, and I don't care about crossing over. Mm -hmm. And my next album might not, you know what I'm saying? I need love. It just happened that people was able to get into it. You know, um, I'm just making music, man. Mm -hmm. You know? What separates me? Me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not them. That's the only separation. That's the only difference. <laughs> A band like Houdini seems to be also sort of like right at the edge there, but they still haven't like broken up to the top. It what? takes time, man. For for some, it takes longer than others. They're a good group, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be I already I already said I'd rather have three people buy my records all the time than have um three hundred thousand people buy my records some of the time. You know, they have a steady audience. Mm -hmm. That's important as well. Mm -hmm. You think you pretty much built up a solid following too. I feel I have a solid foundation. I feel I have a solid foundation. You know, all this pop, all this pop attention, you know, is like in and out. It'll be here today and gone tomorrow. But my solid audience will be there for me. And that's who I'm catering to and who I'm worried about. What kind of feedback do you get? I mean, do, do people send you letters and stuff? Yeah, but I've been on the road so long, I haven't had a chance to really read any of my fan mail lately. But uh, I get a lot of letters, you know. What did they used to tell you before? Were they, were they like that? You know. You know what I'm saying? Just the same, you know what I'm saying? Basically, you know, they like you. Uh -huh. You know? They like the music. You know, they like your show. Different things. Uh -huh. You know? <laughs> it's a funny guy, man. Do you ever feel like when you're, when you're making up songs that you're talking to them or it's just spontaneous? It just comes directly from you? Just from the heart. You know what I'm saying? The songs where I say you in, I am talking to them. But, um, you know, it's from the heart, man. I just... Do what I feel, whatever flows, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Whatever feels good. Hmm. Whatever inspired you to do a ballad? I had two ballads on my last album, but they didn't have as much music, so people didn't consider them ballads. Hmm. I just, you know, I wonder, I'm a romantic person at times. I made a romantic record. Hmm. You sort of added a, a new facet to, to, to rapping, I, I guess. Um, is that something you consider, like, uh, giving me a new dimension? Nah, nah, I just made a ballad. You know what I'm saying? 
Michael City and say, yes, I wanted to take rap to a different dimension. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's me the ballot. Mm -hmm. Often it seems like uh, you're half singer, half actor. Do you ever think about getting more into acting? Half singer, half actor? Well, I've seen you on stage. I mean, I'm just being myself. Uh -huh. No, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not an actor, first of all. I don't claim to be an actor. Second, you know, as far as making a movie, only way I make a movie or something like that is if it was the right part. Then I do it because I know it would help my music career. But as far as making a movie to start an acting career, I wouldn't think about that. I would make a movie to help my music career. You know, I'm not an actor. And, you know, I have no interest in being an actor. or trying to be. Have you had any offers? Like, uh... Not really. You know, people say, oh, you should make a movie, you know. So, hey, you think you ever thought about making a movie? But, you know, don't phase me. I don't even like making videos. Really. I really enjoy making videos. So I know I wouldn't like making a movie. No. I mean, I like seeing the results. I like seeing it on MTV playing. Like, I made a new video called Going Back to, for Going Back to Cali. It's a soundtrack record. You know, I, I mean, I like seeing the videos, you know. But uh, as far as making them, I don't enjoy making them. I'm not an actor. Man. I make music, man. But I mean, performing in a video must not be that different from performing on stage. Uh, yes, it is. Because I'm not performing for cameras on stage mm -hmm. as far as... Um, do it over. Uh, we, need the, we need different shots. Uh... Uh, don't move that ashtray for continuity. Uh, you know, a lot of unnecessary game, man. So the most important thing for you right now is making music and bringing it to the people. That's all. Whatever. Doing what I gotta do. Yes, she's dope. Doing what you gotta do. Doing what I gotta do. So I mean, the, the career, your career is everything right now in your life. You don't have any other interests on the outside. <laughs> my family, man. I mean, my a career. My career is an important part of my life. You know what I'm saying? It's not everything, but it's a very, very important part. You know what I'm saying? Going on the road, fifty percent. Uh huh. I mean, going on the road, it must be like hundred percent. You must not have time for anything else. Well, I mean, I got a telephone, but I mean, this is important to me, and I've dedicated myself to. It, you know. You think it's a lifelong commitment of stage performing, or it's just you're gonna take it as far as you can? Take it as far as I can. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, basically, what you just said. Lifelong commitment and taking it as far as you can. Basically, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go as far as I can go. So I can't go no more. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to chill. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think about the future, much, though? Like what you'll be doing in 10 years? Yeah. Making, just making records. Making music. If you hadn't found the music, what do you think you'd be doing now? Be regular, man. Not that I ain't regular now. Uh, I'd probably still be yawning right now, but I'd be at McDonald's yawning. You know what I'm saying? Sweeping or something. I don't know. I might be doing anything. I might be wilding. I might be doing anything. When did you know you'd, be, you'd make uh, a career out of music? I didn't never know that. It's just, you know, I made a record, man. I never thought, oh, this is my career now, you know. Now it's a career. I don't even still don't look at that as a career. I just make music, man. All I do is make music. This is how I eat. My family eats. Were you talking to the child? Huh? Were you talking to the child? Yeah, my grandfather used to tell me uh, I should be a lawyer because I talk a lot. You know? Yeah, I was talking to him. Definitely. You can look at my school records and see that. Real talk. Did you get a lot, get a lot of trouble at school for talking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you excel at in school? Gym and lunch. <laughs> Major gym with a minor in lunch. <laughs> what kind of sports did you do? Football. All kind of sports. Basketball, football, karate. What were you best at? Karate and football. Really? What position did you play in football? Tailback, nose guard. You know what I'm saying? Tackle. It's crazy. Nose guard? Yeah. Right down in the trenches, Jack. <laughs> I've been away for a while. That's a new motorcycle thing. Motorcycle been told me that the night. Motorcycle Were you interested in motorcycles? Yeah, that, that's the reason I got... My grandfather bought me some equipment because I had always wanted a motorcycle. But I had rode a friend of mine's motorcycle and went around the corner and got hit. And uh, he didn't want to buy me the motorcycle because it was a city atmosphere and there's a lot of cars, you know. It's middle class, but it's a lot of traffic. 
So he bought me equipment instead, turntables and a mixer. You know, got and that's why I'm here today. Hmm. What, 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 he bought you that because you asked for that. Beg. Beg. I wanted the motorcycle one, and I had told him I liked that, and he surprised me one day. Him and my grandma surprised. Me. It was incredible. Yeah. Hmm. Is that what you when you start forming in front of others? Like on a large scale, and you like kids in the schoolyards. Mm, not really. That was when I was in my basement learning, just starting out. You know what I'm saying? And then I did a look. Like if they have a barbecue, I'd set the music up. You know? Then I do a little party in the church basement. You know? Different things. What kind of records were you using with you? Uh, rap records. Like for example. Flash, Treacherous, Fearless, Earlier Rap Group, Soul Sonic, mm. a lot of stuff. Mm. When did you start going public then? Public? Yeah. I, I never actually went public. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, the basement, church basement parties and stuff like that, man, you know. This place from there. Just went from there. Mm-hmm. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Other than football and the uh, motorcycle and the uh, rapping, what kind of interest did you have? When you were that was it. That was it. That's enough. <laughs> Think about it. Football, karate, rapping. You know what I'm saying? You know, of course, you got your girl thing. That's it. You must not spend many hours at home then. I was always I was home sometimes and not home sometimes. Normal. Okay. You know, it wasn't like I had an apartment in the street somewhere or I didn't have a clubhouse up the block or something, not coming home or something. I was always home. You know about this this lawsuit uh, against the Beastie Boys that's pending, I think it's been filed by those, the Jimmy Castor bunch for using like, a riff of their own record? Mm-mm. Being, I think sued for, 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 uh, for plagiarism, for using you know, a bit of music without permission. Uh, you had none about that? Mm-mm. I heard something about it, but you know, I didn't really. But I mean, if you lose this, wouldn't this be like a real, uh, crip- have a crippling effect on uh, Not for me, because anything I use, I ask permission for. Mm-hmm. Just a policy. Yeah, simple, man. Mm-hmm. Give them some publishing money. Right. Or settle. Uh-huh. One or the other. So nothing can happen to you then? You as long as you settle, if you're willing to pay. You got to pay to play, man. No matter what it is. ああ、そうだ。ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、
did what I had to do, and I'm going to continue to do so with help and strength. God, give me help and strength. What did you move away from him? Why not stick to him? We didn't move away, you know. It's just he was working on the Run DMC Tough and the Leather film, and uh, it was time for me to start working on the album, so I went ahead and did it. And by the time he was ready to get involved, I had went so far that it was like there was no need at that point, particular point in time. You know what I'm saying? Me and him just worked together on two records. Uh, we did one for the soundtrack of Less Than Zero, and I did another B-Boy record. We worked together called My Name is Jack the Ripper, which, is, you know, was coming out in about a week or two. Two weeks. Now that you've done this well, are you, just, are you starting to feel pressure that maybe you're not going to be able to do as well the third time around? <laughs> People said that the first time. About the second and the third time they said about the fourth and the fourth about the fifth. If the third is as good as the second, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's no pressure, man. It's on you. You know, I'm not going to start getting high and forgetting. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to start doing other things. My mind is set, man. I'm just going for mine and I'm just going to work as hard as I can. Work, work as hard as I possibly can on every single record, every time. You know, and I'm not going to leave the studio until I'm satisfied. It may not satisfy the people, but it'll always satisfy me. That's guaranteed. Or else I'm not leaving the studio. Now that you're on the road this much, I think you might go back from and feel sort of burnt out from having been on the road for so long. Yeah, I'm ready to go through my little burnt out thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm definitely ready to go be burnt out, you know. <sighs> you know, for a while, but uh, then it'll be time to start working again. How would you get back into working mode? What would you do to refresh yourself, to make yourself... Uh, There's nothing, man. Rest. Rest and wake up. You go to sleep. When you wake up, you're ready to work again. <laughs> but I go to sleep for two weeks or something, a month. But now, you know, after you finish the tour, what do you, what do you plan on doing right away? Relaxing. Like in what way, specifically? Staying home, being home. That's rest. Driving my cars. Seeing your friends. <clears throat> Seeing my friends. You know what I'm saying? Get some ushy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get some oishi. Get some yummy. You got, a, you got a question about uh, about this uh, British go go band called Trouble Fun. You ever hear any of that stuff? British go go band? Is it, is it, are the Greeks said they're British? I no. <laughs> they from Washington, D.C. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> British go go You ever didn't think about this British go go man trouble? <laughs> That's so funny. That's real ill. He's from they, he's from their hometown. <laughs> They're not British. They're not British. Okay, no. you had a question about what you thought. I had a question. Oh, okay. oh I like Trouble Funk. Mm -hmm. I used a little Trouble Funk on Rock the Bells. Uh -huh. Trouble Funk is cool, man. I like the whole side. I like I like I like Go Go. Come on. It's part of your, uh, the stuff you listen to. Uh, nah, I don't listen to Go Go too much. What do you listen to? Everything from Bon Jovi to Old Susanna. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> not by, not, uh, Trouble Funk too much. But sometimes, you know, but not a lot. How do you get exposure to, uh, to current music? Do you listen to radio live? Yeah, when I'm home, you know. And plus, I... Tapes be floating around. We be on tour with brothers who go home every week. You know, I hear tapes, but when I get home, that's when I turn on the radio and my mind explodes because I've been so, I've been like unexposed to it for so long. When I go back, my mind just goes, Pew! you know what I'm saying? Because I hear so many different things. It's real incredible. What have you heard recently that's impressed you? I get raw by Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> Never heard that one, before. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, where did you hear that? I heard it on the, on the tape, I think. Oh, I think you got it. Hmm. Michael Zook's on to do with that. We might have given that. And it, uh, I think he interviewed, or one of his uh, associates interviewed Run DMC, and they were talking about how they differentiate themselves from black mainstream stuff like Michael Jackson. Um, do you tend to think of things in the same way? I don't even know. I, all I do is make records. I ain't trying to differentiate myself from Michael Jackson. I'm just being myself. You know what I'm saying? That's all. It's all boils down to. It's all boils down to being yourself. 
Be yourself. バトミジっていうのにはどういう音
Yeah, put it aside. Yeah, yeah, talk Japanese, man, because I mean, I'm going crazy, man. I'm fucking. I'm waiting for somebody to say Unjin Son, and I'm just going to fucking go crazy. Shogun, that shit was so funny as well. I had to say that joke. That's the only joke. The only joke I wanted to say since I've been here is I'm waiting for some somebody to say Unjin Son. Huh? Unjin Son. <laughs> There's a question about message rap from him. Message. No, my no. only message, man, my only message is um, come to my show and have fun. Listen to my music and enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you nothing else besides that. <sighs> Nigga naps. Huh? You never think about adding that to the I mean, I, I put a little something in there like, uh, I'm going to lead you away from drugs and petty crime. Lead you away from whack beats and rhymes. You know? But it's always mixed with party. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if kids want to hear about politics and <coughs> social issues, they can look at the newspaper and read and look at the news and listen to the radio news to learn about that. They don't buy my album to hear about how bad life is. They buy my album to part for the good life. You know, enjoy music and be happy. And that's why I'm, that's how I make my records with that in mind. Fun, man. I'm a fun person. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm just nothing. Do you hear anything about Japan from any of the guys you know who came over here? Nah, I didn't even talk to them after they came back. I was on the road. I was on tour. I've been on tour since June. What did you expect before coming here? I mean, had you known much about Japan other than Shogun? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, mm, I just, I don't know, man. It's nice. I like the ladies over here. I like it, man. It's cool. I didn't really know too much about it. But I like it now. This is this is the best. since I've been on the road across the seas, the foreign countries. I like this place the best. And believe me, I'm not just saying that. I don't go to Italy and say, yeah, I like Italy the best, and go to England and say, oh yes, I like England. I mean, I really like this place the best. You know, say so you probably could even say that, Cat. Next to the states. Next to the states, this is definitely the place to be. I like Japan. I like the I like the ladies, man. It's so mannerable. Man. Everybody got manners over here. You notice that problem. You from the states, right? Yeah. You notice the people got manners. Sure. You know what I'm saying? It's real nice, man. Mm -hmm. It's cool because people. I mean, yo, in the states, everybody's like, ah, I gotta expect some bras. You know what I'm saying? But uh, um, here it's like, hi, hi. Everybody's, you know what I'm saying? It's like up and down all day long. You know what I'm saying? Some strong backs. Some strong backs over here. They up and down all day long because everybody's like this a lot. Chris Allen, this one, Chris Azy, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? What's that? Let's find out. We got something y'all know about. It's a very frightening experience, like going abroad. You ever been in a concert where things are getting out of hand? Oh, a concert? Yeah. Man, I, where was that at where you had to go in the crib? Glasgow, Scotland. Glasgow, Scotland was kind of hectic. Because <laughs> over there, their way of showing appreciation for you is spitting on you. Really? <laughs> you see his face, man. They spit on you like, love ya. You know what I'm saying? And that's the worst. You know what I'm saying? That's the worst. That's the worst. Did things ever reach like riot proportions? The spit was a tremendous uh, experience. Drink a whole bunch. Like on almost on a day to day basis before you guys all hit big, did you have like a lot of. Uh, you know? <laughs> I knew Ad Rock. I know Ad Rock a long time from the Beastie Boys. Not that we like this. I'm just saying, I know him a long time. Because when I went first with the Def Jam, he knew Rick Rubin, and he was there the first time I went there. When I met Rick, I met <coughs> Ad Rock. But, um, no, I never hung out with them on a daily basis or anything like that. Mm -hmm. you know. The people you hang out with are kind of outside the business then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I must say so. Yeah, I don't hang with nobody in the business. I'm not a, um, I'm not really the, the Hollywood guy that you always see with the next star, you know what I'm saying? I ain't on that tip, man. I'm regular, man. I like to go home and hang with normal people, man. Because after a while, if you don't hang with normal people, you start believing your own bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Can't have that. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. If I hang out with Tyson and Eddie Murphy every day, I might start thinking I'm a different kind of dude. They call me up. I want to hang with them instead of writing a rhyme. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to be regular, man. No, no. What's the thought about how they're just... Oh, you have like a white group like the Beastie Boys. Um, is there much of a difference in white guys? Do? I don't. It doesn't matter to me if there's a difference. Yeah, the difference is they're white, but that's it. You know, their voices are different from mine. I don't care about that. You know, do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? They doing their thing. They're selling their records. I'm doing my thing. I'm selling my records. That's it, man. You know. God bless them. You know what, you want me to be honest with you, there's only one person I don't like in the whole music business, and that's Larry Blackman, because every time I see him, he got them big parrot eyes, and he be looking at me, he got them what, owl eyes, and he, the stupid haircut, and he looks at me like I owe him something. And I don't even know him. That's the only person in the business that I really haven't, I, I, I don't like. And I haven't never even spoken to him. I might be, I might be dissing myself because I might be sitting here talking bad about him and he's a nice guy. He probably is a nice guy. But you know, I don't like the way he looks at me. You know what I'm talking about, right? Larry Blackman got a serious problem. Problem. It's the only person. What do you think of the music, though, Death. Real good. Real good. I listen to Cameo. I love their music. You know what I'm saying? Love it. It's real good, man. I just don't like Larry Blackman. He got a problem. He's paradise. He got a problem, man. Serious problem. You know, oh, oh, something, thing, Jay. And when you read stuff he says in the magazines, he always talking about how rappers are going to be broke. I hope they save their money. It's ridiculous, man. Who says singing careers last forever? Ah, key word. Do you think rappers going to die out? Uh, do you think... Who says singing careers last forever? Same thing. Same thing. Oh, wait, wait, stop. Thank you very much. Stop. Oh, we got you. We're in it, like last year. Come on, you can go take the pictures again. Me and my man E. Love is in these pictures, man. Right, right. Basic question, when did you first start rapping? When I was nine years old, I started rapping. My influ um, inspiration for, to start rapping was Grandma's Flash 35, Treacherous 3, all the earlier rap groups. By the time I was 16, I made a record because I sent a tape into Rick Rubin and he liked it and he called me back. I recorded my first record and I went from there. Did it go the way it went, the way it was shown in Crush Group? That no, 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 no. That was just kind of it. That was a movie. <laughs> Wasn't it as dramatic as that, huh? No, I mean, it was nothing like that. That was just a movie. Uh -huh. How did it actually go? He just called like you back. Like I just said, yeah. He, he called you back there and then. Called me. That's it. Called me back and I went down there. Mm -hmm. And we went from there. We went in the studio. Mm -hmm. He liked you on the spot. He liked the tape. Well, he wouldn't have called back. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Talk to a lot of guys. Uh, kids are doing it. It's like spread completely. It's all over the country, man. Everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. They're trying. Either they're doing it or they're damn sure trying. Uh -huh. From that age, though, you were pretty much better than anybody else. No, it takes time to get good at anything. You know, you, you grow. You know, I liked the music and I was into it. And I just started, you know, and kept going and kept going. It got better and better. You know? What separates you from the other guys, though? Why is it like you, the Beasties, Run DMC, basically, well, actually, the Fat Boys now, so you guys have been successful, whereas the other rap acts haven't quite been as successful in crossing over? What is well, that about you? As far as crossing over is concerned, I ain't trying to cross over, and I don't care about crossing over. Mm -hmm. And my next album might not, you know what I'm saying? I need love. It just happened that people was able to get into it. You know, um, I'm just making music, man. Mm -hmm. You know? What separates me? Me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not them. That's the only side before where they really like that. You know. You know what I'm saying? Just the same, you know what I'm saying? Basically, you know, they like you. Uh -huh. You know? They like the music, you know, they like your show, different things. Uh -huh. You know? 
It's a funny guy, man. Do you ever feel like when you're, when you're making up songs that you're talking to them, it's just spontaneous, it just comes directly from you? Just from the heart, you know what I'm saying? The songs where I say you and I am talking to them, but, um, you know, it's from the heart, man. I just do what I feel, whatever flows, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Whatever feels good. Hmm. Whatever inspired you to do a ballad? I had two ballads on my last album, but they didn't have as much music, so people didn't consider them ballads. Hmm. I just, you know, I wanted to, I'm a romantic person at times. I made a romantic record. Hmm. You sort of added a, a new facet to, to, to rapping, I, I guess. Um, is that something you consider, like, the giving a new dimension? Separation is the only difference. Like a band like Houdini seems to be also, like, right at the edge there, but they still have like, broken up from the top. It takes time, man. For for some, it takes longer than others. They're a good group, though. You know, I'd be I already I already said I'd rather have three people buy my records all the time than have um three hundred thousand people buy my records some of the time. You know, they have a steady audience. Mm -hmm. That's important as well. Mm -hmm. You think you pretty much built up a solid following too? I feel I have a solid foundation. I feel I have a solid foundation. You know, all this pop, all this pop attention. You know, is like. In and out. It'll be here today and gone tomorrow. But my solid audience will be there for me. And that's who I'm catering to and who I'm worried about. What kind of feedback do you get? I mean, do, do people send you letters and stuff? And yeah, but I've been on the road so long, I haven't had a chance to really read any of my fan mail lately. But uh, I get a lot of letters, you know. What are they used to doing rap now? I mean, for some reason, it's kind of associated with street culture, that type of thing. But actually, none of the big rap stars really come from what we would call the street. You guys are all pretty much from middle class or even affluent families. How about in your own case? What, what's the same going? middle class. Grass, trees. Yeah. Plenty of presents on Christmas. You know, yeah. regular. Not nine kids sleeping in the middle of a ride and test in No, none of that. <laughs> Some people tend to That's break. a stereotype for yeah. rap. You know? Uh huh. Whereabouts did you grow up? Um, St. Albans, Queens. Uh huh. So a lot of the kids you were growing up with were doing the same type of thing? Yep, still are. Still are? Yep. You said like from nine years old, so you were in second, uh, third grade? Yeah, nine, yeah, nine years old, third grade. And even like kids that age were, were rapping? The Definitely. Same. Yeah? Even now, yep. It's the thing. So I mean, now it's like, you know, everywhere around the country, even in the Midwest, 